So we're now basically going to assemble the hero character, give him a good position in the front here. Then we're going to go and add a ghost in here. And then I'm not sure if we're going to, if we're going to have time to put the billboards in for the bats. But yeah, let's put a few like four or five ghosts in here that are all trying to get him. Our ghost looks much better than the preview. And then also I'll show you how to add this little fog effect here in Photoshop. It's really not that that difficult. I might use my two viewports here. The top one is going to be just keeping an eye on my on my scene in a moment and I'll just keep moving them around here. The camera is kind of here and this is just roughly where I'd like my first character to be. Let's see if we can drag him in there. So Hero version 3, Alt, left click and drag into the viewport and then I'll pick the position where that is. If I just double click him, he'll go and appear basically in the center of the scene, but we don't really want that. We, don't, we want him to be closer to the camera and where the camera is, that might be far away from where the center of the scene is. Let's go turn our guy around. Look at the lights are turning around with him, which is neat. See what he looks like framed up. So yeah, that is not quite close enough to the camera. Let's bring you up so that you can stand on the wooden path here. Slightly further over there. And then we'll go and click this little white triangle to move you in this center axis over here. In my original image, he was on the left, but I'm happy for him to be on the right. Maybe we'll try that out. I'm also happy to not see his feet. I'm happy for him to be kind of here. And then we'll go and see if we can move him around Something like that. We've locked our camera, so it's uh, if we wanted to move that, we need to unlock it first. It doesn't really matter what it looks like in this scene. So if his feet would intersect with the wood, that doesn't really matter. We can go and maybe zoom in there a little bit, I'm thinking. Now we can make a small adjustment here. Let's go and see if we can just do the focal length a little bit different. I'm thinking like that, and we just move this guy over. Yeah, let's do that. I think that might work. Let's save it as a new master scene. Also, let me relock the camera. Lock selected nodes. There we go. All is locked. Let me go and save this now as whole scene master v2. Yes, let's see a, a little iray preview of the scene and see what my lights look like already here in the scene. Let's see. I'd like to also add a little bit of depth of field in this so that the background of the house is, is more blurred out. So the lights have come from the character that we've just built. I've desaturated the scene a little bit to make it more spooky. I've also added that vignette around it, which it appears we could really increase, right? I'm thinking just to make that, to add that little extra spookiness here. Let's, let's bring the vignette back to 10. Saturation again is debatable. And this is with, with the regular saturation. Also nice. I think we can even oversaturate a little bit, like 0.5, 1.5. That just lifts that orange, brings that orange out even more. I don't really know. Saturation zero means this is going to be a black and white render. Also nice to do that. Also, that would work as well, wouldn't it? That, add a lot of fog, increase the contrast a little bit in Photoshop, imagine. Notice that we're going to bring the detail here and there out with two point lights uh, once we've added the ghosts. Let's leave it like this then. Bring in the ghosts and see where they should be. So I'm thinking there's going to be room enough for two ghosts here and one in the background. Three ghosts coming from the house, following him. So ghost under characters, here's ghost v2, that's it. Alt, left click and drag to bring him out. They, I don't really know how the scale is going to work with the other assets. So that is, that's pretty neat already. If we have ghosts like that and just duplicate this guy a couple of times. Let's see, just before we do that, let's just have a look what this looks like in, in IRA, just so that I get a, get a better overview of, is the lighting okay? So we've amended the, the ghost outfit and the ghost outfit has a little bit of emission applied as well as translucency. So the cutout opacity is taken down and I hope that's going to blend him into the background much better. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. One thing that's important is that these guys, they all need to look at him. So with his, with his eyes, I think I'm just going to turn him around a little 
Yeah, so I'll have one other ghost kind of here, and then another one much larger here, looking over his shoulder, and then another one maybe, maybe from maybe from here, something like that. And they can be different sizes, and you can move them around a little bit, so you can angle them so that there's a bit of variation in there. So I think the lighting works well. I might I might adjust the well actually before I duplicate that I might add a little bit more to the emission on this guy. The default was 15 that we started with. That's in watts. I like that. I have 60, maybe even I like it 75. I think 100 was a bit too much, but maybe 75. This is a great, great starting point. Let's go and put more of these guys um, into the scene. I'll say ghost, edit, duplicate, node hierarchy. So I need to do that so that my eye decals are going to be showing up here. And this guy, he can be, he can be kind of here. He can be a little bit larger as well because he's about to get him or whatever. Have a different angle, make him over, go over to the side a bit. Yeah, this guy could have a different color. We'll go and duplicate the first ghost again. I'm not using instances. They don't work with decals. So a decal is not instance compatible. <laughs> You can grab them anywhere you like. You can, if it's more convenient for you to do this in the viewport directly, that's also possible. I might just go and turn this guy around like so, give him a different spin as well. And then we'll have at least one more guy over here, maybe even another guy just looking over his shoulder. I'm thinking that might, that might work well. Let's duplicate you here. I like the idea that all of them have different, uh, different colors. That's going to be nice. Let's try it in the viewport directly. And sometimes it's difficult to then grab a hold of the correct knickknack here. So sometimes it's just easier to look in the viewport and just grab the correct adjusting knob in the other viewport. Like this, he might be really close perhaps. Just about to bite him or whatever it is that ghosts do. I don't really know. I've never looked into it. Yeah, like that. And then we have one other guy here. A little guy who's kind of twisted around the camera looking at him. I might just duplicate him as well him one more time and then he goes down here he doesn't have to be that large either i can just make him smaller it's just the idea you can also stretch him of course you can make him you know a little bit like like this or whatnot let's see what this looks like let's go save it and see what this is going to look like so master scenes master v3 there so if we're happy with the placement of our ghosts, I think maybe the whole picture is a little bit right heavy. I'm, I'm missing almost some, some content on the left hand side there. Maybe it contains a caption. I don't know. You can spend hours on, on placement. I think I do like the bluish hue there. I think this guy, I want to turn him around so that he looks more at him. Same as this guy. I want the, the eyes to turn at this guy and this guy as well. We want to turn him around and nudge him forward a bit. So this guy, I think he comes forward a bit. Maybe I'll leave it blue. I might try uh, different colors for a test render later. So let's turn this guy over and around to our character more. And forward, did we say? Yeah, a little bit forward, like... Arr! And these guys as well, they need to be rotated too. So this guy should look at him and then go slightly further back here. See if that works. It works better than this guy as well. He goes and turns over that way as if he's coming in from the side yes i think i like that i think i'd like i like another ghost coming at him like this and he doesn't really spot it i think i'd like for his head also to turn a little bit just further to our left his right <laughs> duplicate hierarchies i'm just going to try and get this guy over to the other side and turn him around i think maybe uh Yes, I think that might be nice. So then we can go and put him slightly further over to the right so that they don't intersect with one another. I think maybe on this guy, we just need to see his eyes popping in from the side. Yeah, that. Look, that's that's neat. <laughs> that is neat. And this guy then can go a little bit further over here. And just like him as well, he goes over here. A tad, and it's, it's a bit more balanced than on the left-hand side there, I'm thinking. I think I really like his eyes looking at the camera. I think I, I like that. So I'll save this as a scene and then we'll go and try and just add 
different colors to these guys. I think this guy also, this guy here can be, can go slightly further over here. And then I think that's, that's the end. There's a volumetric fog shader in the scene and it's it's nicely done so it's maybe it's a little bit much so you can tone it down especially since we've seen the previews without the fog depth of field that is maybe one thing i would perhaps add but i'd rather just take a crack at different colors of these guys so if this ghost let's make him if it's not blue perhaps we'll try pink blue pink green orange let's try this guy in in kind of yellowish or oh, orangey. Yeah, let's try another guy in green, maybe. Kind of a mid-green. So it's always the emission channel of these ghost objects here. Green, uh, what else? This guy, he can, these guys can be blue. I like that. This guy, we need one more color for this guy. Let's do purple. There, I like it. It's almost like you want to make one, you want to make this guy a different color as well. How about kind of a, more like a red type color more like a blood red more something more orange let's try let's try orange there i think that's nice that is nice including the fog from the set so we didn't have to put it in in photoshop just for completion let's just quickly do this let me render this out uh, with and without fog let's do, let's go switch this fog off i'll render this out and we'll put fog in in photoshop I'm also going to, as I said before, I could go and take the background out. So the background is something that I've done as an environment here. So I would probably use Photoshop to add my own background in there and make it a gradient there. So filament. Did we save the scene? This is Master V4 with colors. I'll make a fairly low res render like 1280 by 720 and I'll use 200 iterations and I will use my IRA denoiser. I'm using two RTX 2080s for this and roll with it. Let's see what, see what our memory consumption is. And then after the stream, I might make a larger render and put that in my DAS gallery. And then we can see the before and after. I'll put the other render in my DAS gallery as well. And we can have a comparison. This is what I had prepared and this is what actually came out. So no bats, but it would be just um, essentially plain objects, which would be uh, billboards. And they would be, you know, put them in SUC fit. So we've got 2.5 gigabytes of texture memory here. That's not bad at all. So before that, I think just the set alone, Orbit Mansion, is about... This is over four, and that's just the set without my hero character. I didn't do any depth of field. This would be good to blur out the house and the grounds a little bit more. We have kind of a short focal length, so we'll probably need something like 10, 8, 10, something like that, or even lower values, so that there's noticeable blurring on the house. 